Okay, uh, now we'll be starting the uh, next part of our discussion. Uh, we already know what are the basic uh, building blocks of a scene and, and how do you create a uh, simple model, right? So what all we'll see in, in this particular uh, discussion, I'll just give you uh, an overview. We'll first see, uh, you can say one of the premier uh, popular components, which is Elixnet, right? But uh, this discussion is not intended to be a case study of different architectures, right? We'll do that in the next week, where we'll study in detail different popular architectures which are publicly available today. But uh, I'll give you a brief review of this network architecture uh, very briefly because we'll be using it in the next topic, which is transfer learning, right? So we'll see uh, transfer learning, which is a very common technique that most of the researchers will first try before making their own networks, right? And then maybe today, if we have some time, we'll, we'll discuss uh, the basics of regularization techniques, right? Uh, and batch normalization, maybe we'll see uh, next time. Okay, so uh, let's start a discussion with this uh, AlexNet. If you remember lecture number one, we discussed that um, AlexNet was actually uh, the winner of the 2012 ImageNet competition when the error rates had dropped from 26% to 15%, right? So this was a, a solution which was based on a deep neural network, right? So just some brief details about this network. Later on, we'll have a comprehensive case study as well. So this network actually, since it was solving the image net classification problem, so these are colored images, which are uh, resized at, at, you can say a scale of two to seven by two to seven by three, right? So just like we made a very simple network in this particular architecture, the first layer had filters of size 11 by 11, right? And there were 96 such filters. You see, uh, today, for today, uh, this size 11 by 11 is a bit too large, right? You won't see filter size of, uh, you can say such magnitude, maybe most of the filters that you will see in popular networks, they are like three by three or five by five, right? So it is an unusually large, relatively large filter size when you compare it with what we have today. And similarly, the stride, you see uh, four, which is quite big that all of a sudden you are taking a jump of four, which, which is not a common value that you will use today. Right? Anyways, you see, uh, now if we have this information and with the knowledge we have gained previously, we should be able to compute that what should be the size of the output volume after this first layer, okay? so. I want you to think, but let me also do it, that input is like n is two, 2 to 7 by 2 to 7, right? Uh, there's no padding, so minus f plus 2p, there's no padding. And then the stride is 4, and then plus 1, right? So it comes out to be 55. So it means that the output volume would be 55 cross 55 cross, what is the third dimension? The third dimension is equal to the number of filters. So we had 96 filters, so this is like 96, right? So this would be the uh, size of the uh, output volume, right? 55 cross 55 cross 96, right? Now, as always, the you see the next question could be, what is the total number of parameters in this layer? Okay, so you think in your mind, total number of parameters is total number of values in the filter. So what is the size of one filter? One filter is 11 cross 11 cross three, right? And for every filter you have a bias, okay? How many filters do you have? 96 such filters, okay? So it will give you something like 35,000 parameters approximately, right? Okay, so you can actually uh, keep on doing this, right? The, the next layer has then three by three filters, right? So you can you can keep on doing it and you can actually uh, see this complete, you can say architecture where you have the size, you have name of the layer. And eventually what is important is this last layer, right? Which has 1000 neurons because why 1000? Because in ImageNet data set, you have uh, 1000 different categories of objects. Okay, so one thing is that suppose today you want to make AlexNet, so you can just replicate the architecture, you can make a model just like I showed you previously and you can keep on adding layers. And eventually if you want to 
uh, you see, there's a good idea that if you want to test your understanding of CNNs, you just build a random network, right? Uh, maybe uh, using TensorFlow, just think of some parameters, some hyperparameters. And then once you have built the network, you can write model dot summary, just like we did in MLP. So it will give you layer by layer uh, size of output volume and number of parameters. So you see, we have also seen how to manually compute these volumes and these parameters. So if you want to enhance your learning or you want to test your learning of CNNs, just choose a random architecture with some hyperparameters, uh, write the program in Keras, write model or summary, and then numerically compute how many parameters should be there, and then check your answer with whatever you are getting from, uh, from this, uh, you can say, automatic uh, model or summary function, right? So anyways, now um, you see, we will come back to LXNet uh, next week, right? But the reason we actually discussed is uh, this LXNet was because we wanted to uh, see this main topic, which is using pre-trained ConNet, which is called transfer learning, right? Now, what, what is this concept? You see, uh, suppose you have a problem to solve, right? So most likely if it's a pattern classification problem uh, of images or text or anything else, then it is highly likely that you will be solving it using uh, deep learning or convolutional neural network, right? So it doesn't make sense that if 100 people are solving 100 different problems, everyone comes up with a specific architecture of their own, right? It means I will have 100 different models and more, most of them would be similar. They would be solving similar problems and the only difference would be hyperparameters, right? Someone is using two layers, someone is using 10 layers, you are using five by five filter, I'm using three by three, right? So that's why it's not a very smart idea that everyone starts to build their own network from the scratch. The first thing we do is if we have a problem to solve, we see, okay, can an existing model solve this problem, right? And for the existing model, presently we have seen only one model. Right? But in the next few weeks, we'll see many other popular models which are much deeper and which, which give you much better performance. Right, But assume you have access to some model like AlexNet. So when actually people train their models, they, they, they have huge training data, they have high computational resources. So they make their trained models publicly available. Right, It means today, you can download LXNet. Uh, when I say download, it means you are downloading the architecture. You are also downloading the weights. So it is already trained, right? It is trained on 1000 classes. So today, if you want to uh, make a system which can discriminate between cat and dog, you don't need to train a model from the scratch. If LXNet already has classes to cat and dog, then you can actually reuse it. Even if you are working on data which has which does not have exactly the same classes, you can still reuse major proportion of that network, right? So this concept is called transfer learning, that you are transferring the knowledge that was acquired on a data set to your own problem, right? If you word by word translate it, it is something like that, right? When you say transfer learning, so whatever was learned on a data set by someone else, you are transferring that useful knowledge to your own problem, right? So this is what we mean by transfer learning. So let's dive into more details of what transfer learning is and how it works, right? So as I told you that um, we'll be coming back to this discussion. So uh, just to recall that uh, CNN is one single unit, but it actually has two logical parts. One is the convolutional base in which you are applying convolution and pooling, et cetera, right? Which is typically called the feature extractor part of the neural. Then you have the fully connected layers, one or more, which is called the classifier part, right? Where you have fully connected layers and you are actually making a prediction about the class, right? So we have also seen in our previous discussion that when you are learning the features, they are actually hierarchical features, right? because input of one layer, sorry, output of one layer becomes input to the next layer. So you see, uh, maybe when you are solving a problem, 
you don't always need a huge data, as I told you a little while back, because as a first attempt, what we'll do is we'll try to reuse whatever is already available. And why we can reuse it? You see, when we, you are learning features in a hierarchy, so the initial layers of a model, they are learning very low level features, right? Like small edges or curves. So suppose you have a model which was trained on maybe say vehicles, right? So vehicles have the initial layers may be learning these parts of vehicles like these curves and so on, right? And now you want to use the same model for maybe uh, you can say faces, right? So you see, of course, the deeper layers will be learning high level features, but the initial layers, for example, the features I have drawn here, they are equally useful for faces. They are equally useful for maybe cat versus dog problem or any other problem, right? Because they are so primitive shapes that they are likely to appear in almost every type of object. So it means, of course, the higher layers are learning features which are specific to data, but at least the initial layers, they are learning features which you can reuse, right? How much you can reuse? It depends how much similar your problem is to the problem on which the model was actually trained, right? So this is the, the key idea that we take a pre-trained model and we adapt it to our own problem. And why we can do that? I have just given you the reason that since features are learned in a hierarchical fashion, so it is expected that some of the initial layers, at least the initial layers will have, a, uh, will have features which you can reuse, right? Okay, now there are three different methods in which you can use a pre-trained network. The first, which we call strategy one, which is not very smart, but still uh, theoretically we can do this, is that you actually only borrow the architecture of a model, but you train the entire model from scratch. Now, what does it mean? Suppose you are trying to solve a problem and you say, okay, instead of choosing my own number of layers, my own number of filters, I can borrow the architecture of AlexNet, which I just showed you, okay? So when I say borrow the architecture, so it means you will be like saying, okay, in the first layer, I have 11 by 11 filters, Stride 4, 96 filter, then in Conf2, I'll be having this, and then I'll have a pooling layer and so on, right? But you, you, you actually write a program in TensorFlow, which replicates the architecture of AlexNet, but you train it from the scratch. In other words, you do not borrow the weights on which this data was trained, right? So this is, you can say a trivial way. Uh, of course, it will require a large data set and sufficient computational power because you are actually training everything from the scratch. It is uh, only the architecture that you have borrowed. Okay, the, the next one is uh, maybe strategy two, which is called fine tuning a pre-trained model, right? And I'll also uh, tell you strategy three together and then we'll discuss together on the board, which is called using CNN as a feature extractor, right? So this is something very important. So I'll just uh, migrate to the board and explain to you uh, the difference between uh, these two, right? So in strategy two, we are saying, fine-tune the model. Okay, now please see carefully because it is uh, sometimes, uh, it is, it can easily be confused with strategy three, right? So let me just draw a CNN, right? So suppose this is your uh, convolutional part, then you have some fully connected layers. Okay. And here you have 1000 neurons, say this is AlexNet. And here you have some input uh, which you feed to this, okay? Now, so let me just label it. Uh, so this is your um, convolutional base or feature extractor, and this is your classifier. Okay. Now you see, when you download AlexNet, you have all the weights of all the connections, you have the architecture, right? Suppose you are solving digit recognition problem, zero to nine, okay? Or character recognition problem, A to Z. Maybe we take A to Z example, okay? So you see this model is trained to recognize 1000 classes, 
okay but you have 26 classes so what you need to do the first thing you need to do is you need to throw away this last layer of the network you don't need this layer why because you are not working on these 1000 classes you have your own 26 classes or your 10 classes if you are solving digit recognition or any other problem so what you do is you throw away the last layer and then you add your own layer okay for example i add a layer with 26 neurons okay and of course this layer which is the second last layer you connect this with this layer okay i am showing a single arrow but this is actually a fully connected architecture it means every neuron in this red layer is connected with every other neuron in the last layer which has 26 neuron right so you connect it like this okay <clears throat> now you see this is a new layer which you have added so there are no weights here right because you just added this layer there are no weights there will be just some random values but in this part of the network you already have weights okay because it was trained on on, on image net right now what you can do is depending upon how much similar your data is to the data set on which the network was originally trained you can say okay for characters maybe the first four layers they are learning the features which are good for characters as well but the features which are learned in these higher layers i need to update them right so what you can do you can freeze first four layers why we are freezing because we say okay these are low level features and we can reuse them so we freeze first four layer what do i mean by freeze i'll tell you in a while and for the rest of the layers what we do we continue back propagation when i say continue back propagation it means you will update the weights of other layers right so when i say freeze the first four layer it means we are not updating their weights we are reusing simply the weights which were already learned on the imagenet data set because we are assuming that these are low level features and they can be replicated or re-employed in our problem as well and for the rest of the layers there are already weights except the last layer but we continue back propagation to update the weights so that the filters you have in these higher layers they are better tuned to your data set because previously they were uh, you can say uh, trained on the imaginary data set now you must be thinking how do i know how much to freeze on, on on what layers to update right so again this is a design choice right that uh, there's no rule of thumb you just uh, with some experience you can actually and looking at the architecture of the network, you can actually guess or initially you can do hit and try that maybe I fix a few layers or if you don't want to freeze anything, you also have the option to train the complete network, right? But when I say train, it means you will not start with random weights. You are starting with the weights of LXNet and you are continuing back propagation from that point onwards, right? So there's no compulsion that you have to freeze some layers. But it is common that normally we freeze two, three, four initial layers, and on rest of the layers we continue back propagation. But it is perfectly legal that you continue back propagation on the complete network. So to summarize, fine tuning means throwing away the last fully connected layer, replacing it with your own layer according to your problem, and continuing back propagation on the network. I am using the word continue continue from where AlexNet had left. It means you are not randomly initializing the weights except for the last layer. And when you are doing back propagation, you can do back propagation on the complete network, or you can choose to freeze some of the initial layers based on the hypothesis that these layers are learning low level features, which can be common in your data set as well as the data set on which the model was originally trained right so this i i'll i'll, I'll, I'll do a re recap but let me just do uh, strategy three and then i i do i compare the two right so this was fine tuning the third one is called using a pre-trained network as a feature extractor only feature 
extractor only. Why I'm saying only? Because I will not be doing classification here, right? I'll be using it only as a feature extractor. Now, what we do, just, just uh, see again. So you see, this is your trained model. Again, two parts, con part and the classifier part, okay? Now what you do in feature extractor, you actually throw away the complete classifier part, it means you just throw it away, okay? This you have downloaded, it is already trained. So what you do is you have some data like your images, character recognition problem. So you have images of A, B and up to Z. So what you do is you feed every image to this trained model. It means you will do a forward pass only because this model is already trained, okay? You will pass this image through this and it will give you output. What is this output? Maybe the last layer has 4096 uh, neurons. So it will give you a vector of size 4096. In case of LXNet, it is 4096. So I'm, that's why I'm using this number, right? Before the classifier, you just, you just throw it away only have the convolutional part. So you, you pass every image to this trained model and every image is mapped to a feature vector. So now suppose you have 1 million images in your data set. So every image is now mapped to a feature vector. You have a data like this. Now you can use any classifier, maybe SVM or KNN or any other machine learning classifier by using these features. Okay, rather than using this part of the network to classify. So in feature extractor only, what we are doing, we are using a forward pass of a trained network. We are passing all our data, training data as well as test data, right? Through this trained model. This model will convert my entire data set or map my entire data set into feature vectors. Now, once I have features, you can use any machine learning classifier, you can train a classifier, uh, SVM, random forest, whatever you like, or simply KNN, and then do the classification, right? So you see, in, in case of fine tuning, we are continuing back propagation and updating the weights of all or a subset of layers. In case of feature extraction only, we are throwing away the classifier part and simply, uh, you can say, using the, the, the convolutional base to extract features. And then we are using a classifier like um, any classifier that you like, right? So now uh, let's uh, let's go back to our slides and again see a summary of these. So as we discuss, uh, the strategy two is fine-tuning a pre-trained model where you change the fully connected layer uh, to match the data under study and continue back propagation, update the parameters of all or a subset of layer. This is important, right? that initial layers can be frozen, it, it's your choice, right? Okay, and strategy three, as I told you that you simply uh, use the convolutional base, you pass your data through the network and use the output of convolutional base as features, and then you feed your features to any other classifier, right? So as an example, LXNet uh, that we just saw, it, uh, it gives you feature vector of 4096, so you can convert all your data into this, uh, uh, the, the, these feature vectors and then use a classifier, okay. Now, there's a very really good uh, tutorial uh, blog sort of, uh, you can say tutorial on the internet from which I borrowed these illustrations, which actually uh, give you a very, very good visual illustration of which strategy to use in which situation, right? So it's, it's a very good idea. So maybe you, it will help you better understand this, uh, transfer learning, right? So you see this uh, blue part actually means that you are training. And this white part, since white is like ice, which is frozen. So this white part means uh, you, you, you are freezing these layers, right? So if we visually represent our three strategies, so this, this part is the feature extractor and this is the classifier, okay? So in strategy one, you are training the complete model, it means you are training the feature extractor as well as the classifier. In strategy two, you are freezing some of the layers, right? And you are freezing, sorry, you are continuing back propagation or training on some part of feature extractor and the classifier, right? It depends how much you want to freeze, right? And then in strategy three, 
you actually freeze the complete convolutional base, you pass your data and you convert your data into feature vector and then you can use any classifier, which of course will require a separate training, right? Now, as you must be thinking, what strategy to use in what situation? Again, there's no, um, you can say rule of thumb, but there are some guidelines and these guidelines are dictated by two parameters. One is how much data do you have available? So one parameter is size of data. And the second parameter is how much data, how much similar your data is to the data on which the network was originally trained. When I say originally trained, I'm talking about the network which you downloaded. For example, if you download LXNet, it is trained on ImageNet data, right? So you see, you can have four different uh, possibilities. You have a large data set, but it is different from the source data set. Source means the one on which model was trained. You can have a large data set which is similar to the source. Similarly, you can have a small data set which is either different or similar to the source data set, right? So you have two parameters, so you can have four different combinations, right? Now, again, these are guidelines, not uh, you can say rule of thumb, but just guidelines which you should uh, you can explore in the beginning. So let's start with the with the first possibility, right? Where you have large data set, but it is different from the pre-trained model. So you see. The data set is not similar and you have plenty of data. So you can simply borrow the architecture and train the complete model, right? Why we can train? Because we have large data. And why we are recommending training? Because your data is different from the source data, right? So you can train the entire model. So this is actually strategy one. Now let's first see this, this fourth, right? Where you have a small data, which is similar to the source data set. Since you have small data, so you see uh, on a small data set, if you, if you do training of a CNN, there's always a risk of overfitting, right? So what we do is since the data is very similar to the source data, so you can use the pre trained model as a feature extractor, right? You can convert all your data into feature vectors, right? And then you can use conventional machine learning, any classifier to which can, which can actually, uh, you can say, uh, learn the classes and perform the classification, right? So here we are talking about S3, where you are using uh, this only as a feature extractor. Now we come to the other two possibilities, right? Uh, we come in this quadrant two, where you have a large data set, which is similar to pre-trained model, right? Since you have sufficient data, so you see, uh, and it is similar. So we have chosen to freeze some of the layers and we are freezing, we are training some part of the convolutional base and this classifier, right? Um, how much, how many layers you want to freeze? Again, it's, it's a matter of choice, but uh, it also depends on how much data you have and what is the uh, similarity with the uh, source data set, right? So this is actually uh, strategy two, which is fine tuning. And similarly for quadrant three, where you have a small data set, which is uh, different, Again, we are using fine tuning where we are uh, training some part of convolutional base and the classifier and we are freezing some layers, right? Now, if you compare this and this means Q2 and Q3. So you see when your data set was different, okay, we have, uh, uh, we have actually frozen lesser layers, right? Because the data set is different. So it means uh, higher layers are actually learning features which will not be applicable to a different data set. But when your data set is very similar, so you see we are actually freezing uh, a lot of convolutional base, right? The, the white part here is much bigger as compared to white part in, in this third quadrant. And the reason is if the data set is similar, then we expect that higher layers would be uh, learning features which can be replicated to the target data set. But if the data set is different, then we can only freeze relatively fewer initial layers and we'll have to train the uh, rest of the layers, okay? So uh, maybe with this, we can take a pause. Okay, uh, now I'll be again um, giving you a quick walkthrough uh, of uh, both of these techniques, feature extraction and uh, fine tuning, right? But I understand that uh, just by looking at some pieces of code in slides may not be very meaningful. So I will also upload uh, a comprehensive practical on 
CNN and fine tuning, which, uh, which is not mandatory, but if you want to practice, you can go through it. And it will also help you in attempting assignment number two, right? Um, so ideally, I was planning to give assignment two in this week, but since we have extended the deadline for assignment one, so maybe once you have submitted assignment number one, so in the next week, uh, the submission, I'll be uploading uh, assignment number two, which will be uh, implementation of uh, the same problem with CN, right? Anyway, so you see, as I told you, most of the popular models are available, right? When I say available, it means you can, you can download the architecture as well as the code, right? So one, famous architecture you saw was AlexNet, right? Another one which we have not seen yet, but we'll do so in the next week is a famous architecture, which is called VGG16, right? So it was in 2014 that uh, this architecture was uh, published, right? And you see, uh, since uh, it is publicly available, so you can simply write VGG16, uh, weights, ImageNet, because it was trained on ImageNet, the input size, was two to four by two to four by three. And this parameter include top, right? When it is false, it means you are saying, I just want convolutional layer, right? Top by top means the fully connected layer, the classifier part. So if you want to load the classifier part, you will make it true. If you only want the convolutional part, you will make it false, right? So since we are implementing strategy three, which is just feature extraction. So we only need the convolutional part, right? So we have not seen this architecture, but let me tell you that there are different uh, layers of convolution. And once you do the final convolution, your output is seven cross seven cross five one, right? This is the size of output volume uh, before the fully connected layer, right? So next we flatten it and then we have two fully connected layers and then the softmax layer. But since we have not included that part of model in our network. So when you feed something through to this network, right, what you get as an output is a volume of size 7 cross 7 cross 512, right? You will you will know why we have this size when once we see this architecture in detail, right? Okay, so you see now, once you have loaded this, if you are doing it for the first time, it will take some time, right? Because it will download the complete model along with the weights from some resource and it will store it on your disk in some temporary folder, right? So that first time, if you do this, it will take some time, but for subsequent runs, it will directly pick the model from your hard disk, right? So be patient if you are doing this for the uh, first time on your machine, right? Then once you have the model, you can load any data like uh, MNIST or CVL or any data set that you like. And for your own problem, you can convert all your labels into one hot encoding. If you remember this category, two categorical function converts your class label into uh, actually uh, binary matrices, which are one hot encoded, right? Now this is important that you see, I, I just told you that the output is seven cross seven cross five one two. So what we'll do is we need to pass our, all our training as well as test data. We need to do a forward pass of the network which will convert our images into seven cross seven cross five one two. Okay, because we are just doing a forward pass. We are just doing feature extraction. So you see these statements, which you see here, we are creating empty matrices, right? So that we can store the features. So we have uh, one matrix for storing the features of training data, seven by seven by five one two, and the other one in which we are initializing with all zeros in which we'll be storing uh, the, the features that are computed for our test or validation data, right? Now, what we do, we make a forward pass. And you know from your previous knowledge or if you have implemented assignment one, once you have a trained model, the predict, predict function is actually a forward pass. Okay, so just like uh, you, you do by hand that you multiply with weights and you apply activation function and all that, right? So this predict function is actually doing a forward pass. So you have the trained convolutional base, you do a forward pass and you get uh, your data mapped to feature, right? And you can of course reshape it into a vector if you like. Similarly, you have your test data, you do a forward pass. So all of your test data, all your images, they are mapped to uh, another vector, right? 
And now you have these two variables, train features and validation features. And now you can use these features to train any classifier, uh, whatever you like, and treat it as a classical machine learning problem, right? So this is uh, how you implement uh, feature extraction or strategy three of transfer learning, where you simply use a pre-trained model for extracting features and you add your own classifier. Now, if you want to do fine tuning, so again, you see, as I told you, you have the possibility of freezing initial layers. So here you see how much do you freeze? It depends um, on how much similar your data is with the original data set on which the model was trained. So in this case, what we are doing, we are just uh, loading the model. And when we say layer dot trainable is false, this is like freezing the layer. Okay, means this layer will not be trained. So in this example, we are freezing all the layers except the last four layers, right? So maybe our data is very similar. So we say, okay, we can keep all the initial layers frozen and we can just uh, train the last four layers of the network, right? So now you see what we do. I create a model. In my model, I add this, uh, this model in which I have frozen the initial layers. And then this is the convolutional base, right? After that, I can add any layer, any number of layers. I have added one fully connected layer, then another fully connected layer. And the last layer, of course, will depend on uh, what problem I'm solving. So maybe I'm solving a three class problem. You can just ignore this part, right? Because this I have not told you, right? So now, once you have this model, you can continue back propagation using model dot fit, right? Just like you do for an MLP. So uh, in fine tuning, we download a model, we freeze its layer, and then we add our own layers. In this case, we have added two fully connected layers, one with 1024 neurons and the last one with only three neurons because we are solving a three class problem. And then we can call model.fit function. This will update the weights of all the layers except those which we have frozen. And once the model is trained, you can actually give it test data and uh, compute the performance, right? So this um, concludes this, uh, you can see part C of uh, CNN. So maybe we can spare some time on, on discussion.